Hello, everyone, and welcome to our three-part webinar series on CST Studio for Electronic Design. I am Jeff Linderman, a senior specialist at Go Engineer, supporting the CST Studio software. For this three-part webinar series, we have Emmanuel LaRue and we ran Shu that are also presenters, and they are both from Dassault Systems. Emmanuel will be our technical presenter in addressing questions in part one and part three of the series, and we ran will be the presenter for part two of the series. In this webinar, we are looking at using CST Studio Suite to analyze electronic design and PCBs. So we know electronic devices are integrated into many product designs from household appliances, automobiles, medical equipment, aircraft, mobile devices, and more. All of our electronic circuits are becoming more and more complex. These circuits must work in conjunction with each other and other electronic devices while keeping signal integrity, or SI, and power integrity, PI. Those are two of the things that we're going to look at in our webinar today. And there's also other electromagnetic compatibility standards that must be met. That is one of the things we're going to cover in the third part of our webinar series. The PCB boards within our electronic devices will create heat and need to be cooled. So simulation of that design is going to be in our second webinar. So using CST Studio in development stage of our PCB boards and our electronic devices are going to identify problems that can be corrected prior to the start of manufacture. So in this webinar today that Emmanuel is going to present is on signal and power integrity. First, I will go through an introduction to CST Studio Suite. And then Emmanuel will present on the different cases that we need to um, simul simulate our PCB um, for signal integrity and power integrity. He will also show a quick design rule check to help get rid of some of the signal integrity EMI interference. We'll look at how our PCB can actually be bent and simulated for a wearable device. That's an amazing thing I think that CST Studio can do. We can also look at verifying how we can achieve a required speed, so our megabits per second on high-speed connections. And then finally, discover how to optimize our number of decoupled capacitors in PCB boards. CST Studio Suite is one of the simulation offerings through Dassault Systems. There are simulation tools within SolidWorks. The 3D Experience platform has simulation roles and apps with cloud-based computing options. And then there are the Simulion Legacy products. The capabilities presented in this webinar series are available in the CST Studio Suite Legacy product and a 3D Experience Electromagnetic Engineer role. So what is the CST Studio Suite? It's been an industry leader since 1992, so it's not a new package. It's been around forever. It's got a complete solution for 3D electromagnetics. It does so many different things and can handle so many different types of simulation. They joined with the SO Systems in 2016, and we have a worldwide support network, such as Emmanuel. Our key features that CST will allow us to do, the electromagnetic field solvers for applications across the spectrum allow us to do any of these electromagnetic field simulations. It's really a key end-to-end -end solution for designing, analyzing, optimizing electromagnetic components and systems. The key capability that we're looking at in this package right now is um, importing PCB designs from the most popular EDA layout tools. So we can import o ODB++, Altium, Cadence, Mentor Graphics, Zookin, all of these can be imported directly into CST. All the capabilities that CST can do, we've got high frequency, so 3D electromagnetic simulation for high frequency components. Low frequency, so we're dedicated to simulation of static low frequency devices. We can do particle advanced simulation tool for accurate analysis of charged particle dynamics. We have thermal and mechanics, coupled studies for thermal coupling between electromagnetic physics simulations. There's a cable tool for analysis of conducted transmission, PCBs and packages, 
this is one of the things we're going to be looking at, PCB rule checking and circuits and systems. For our webinar series, things that are going to be highlighted in the electronic design, signal and power, integrity, um, the thermal and mechanics, PCB rule checking, and all of those are what we're going to be presenting on in these. So with this, I want to introduce you to Emmanuel. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you again. So welcome, everybody, for this webinar about signal and power integrity. So I'm going to start with some questions. First question is, do you have high-speed connection on your PCB? Like SATA, PCI Express, high-speed memory, like DDR3, DDR4, USB3. Do you have power, like DC-DC converter part on your PCB? Is your PCB uh, very dense and compact? or shaped in a particular way? And do you have issue to cool down your PCB? If all, if you have some of the answer is yes, then you need to simulate your PCB. Of course, it makes no sense to simulate a basic PCB with very uh, low speed. It doesn't make any sense. So you, you need to ask yourself if you have those, uh, those troubles. And of course, here what we see is that it's more and more common to have some facilities for a product to have, for example, acquisition on quick memory with DDR4, very uh, high speed serial link like PCI Express or USB 3. So at that point, of course, you will need to simulate. Uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm going to explain the workflow we have uh, for electronic design analysis. What kind of uh, format are we going to import from the PCB layout that you are using? Then I will dedicate time on uh, how to check some basic rules on your PCB without making any simulation. It's very quick and it allows you to see if uh, the PCB has, has been routed well. Then we are going to check the board performance for a signal and for integrity. And at the end of the day, I will show you how you can speed up your simulation with high performance computing on premise or on the cloud. So regarding electronic design analysis, here is the workflow. You always start with the concept. And very often, if you have high speed, what you, what you have is that uh, you, you need uh, to deal with uh, high bit rate. This is what has been introduced by Jeff. High bit rate means uh, 500 megabit per second, for example, that has to spread on your PCB traces. And before to make a first layout, you need to investigate about what is the right technology for that. Therefore, we are able with our solution to make what we call pre-layout simulation to understand if a certain path going through the via hall is going to uh, be compliant with a certain KPI in terms of bid rates. And this is what you can do at pre-layout. For example, you can dimension via all so that you are sure you can fulfill your KPI. So this kind of analysis at position one is very important. Then after you have been placed your component at the right position, because this is always the big issue, to place the high speed component at the right place on your PCB. After you have done that, you, you can really export your layout file and analyze it. And we have several solutions after importing the PCB. We can really make a quick uh, control of the rules. And I will explain in, in the next part what, what I'm meaning. And then you are going to predict signal and power integrity as well as thermal simulation. This you will see next week with my colleague, Veran. So let's start with the import. And here, of course, we are not going to import the mechanical CAD data, but we are going to import from the electronic CAD. And here, I, I'm pleased to, to tell you that we can import native file from Cadence. You can import the .brb file, and you can import as well from CR8000 from Zucan and from a PCB expedition from Mentor Graphics. And we have capability to import 
some kind of a neutral files uh, that are coming uh, for most of the vendors today, like ODB++ and also IPC2581, which is a new neutral file uh, that is able for us to rebuild the PCB in our environment. So basically, it's, it contains much more information about elevation thickness, data material, compared to a Gerber file. We can also import Gerber file or VXF, but then you would need some manual work uh, to do in the software uh, to, to be able to simulate. So after you, you have your uh, PCB imported, you are in some kind of an environment where you can see the cross-section, you can uh, appreciate what is about, is it a ground layer, a, a signal trace layer, what is the thickness, elevation, what are the uh, physical property like connectivity and so on, and value of epsilon with uh, all the info you need. Then I want to show we are able, as I understand some of you are using Altium Designer, I want to show you especially because of the result of the pool, this kind of integration we have. Uh, especially with Altium Designer. So uh, here, what I'm going to show you is a possibility to have a co-working between the electronic CAD engineer and the uh, in, el electromagnetic engineer. So it's very nice. So let's imagine that you have a PCB that is laid down with Altium Designer and uh, you have a version of this PCB that is available. Thanks to a collaborative designer with Atum, we are able, first of all, to load all the data automatically into the CST connector. Therefore, for example, in this case, you get the full PCB loaded inside CST Studio. Here you go. And imagine you want to do a power integrity simulation. This is something I'm going to show in the next minute. But the goal will be basically to make a simulation of your power distribution network to see if uh, you, you, you could have problem of ground bound. So you have basically a result of this kind, which is some kind of impedance map with peaks. And at the peaks value in frequency, you need to see in red where you need to place decoupling capacitor to enhance your power integrity result. And so what do you do as an electromagnetic engineer? You send a notification to the uh, PCB loud guy He's going to do a new version of the PC. He's going to add himself decoupling capacitor exactly where you told me to add. And at that point, you are going to get yourself a notification using the collaborative designer with Atium. You are going to get a notification, a new version of the PCB is available. Do you want to simulate it? And of course, answer is yes. I want to simulate the new version, PCB1. And at that point, what is great is that you don't need to set all the simulation again. You just can just run simulation and appreciate the results. So what I want to, to mention here is that we don't just, you know, import the PCB layout file uh, from Altium, but we are able also to do a very nice what if analysis in a short time without the need to set the simulation again. This is what we call mod sim, modeling simulation on ECAD. It works with Cadence Allegro as well, huh? and also with Zucan CR8000. Um, so this is what I wanted to show you to complete a little bit of the workflow. Then sometime, when you import a PCB, you are working on a, a wearable device, so you need to wear your device on your arm of your body. So you are able to bend. And here it's a very nice feature. We have inside CST, as soon as you imported your PCB, you are able to bend it to simulate a bended version of it, exactly in the way it will be in practice working uh, as if you have, a, for example, a computer or a smartwatch on your arm. So the PCB can really be bended. Then, Let's uh, deep dive now on the design rule check. Design rule check is basically the idea of making a screening of your PCB where basically you are going to have a, a, a verification of rules. What are the rules? Do I have enough decoupling capacitor? Do I have nets that are routed like here uh, near the border of the PCB? 
it's not good because if you have a high speed signal that is routed near the border of the PCB, you know, you have what we call a quasi transverse electric magnetic uh, pattern, field pattern, a quasi TEM mode that is spreading on a microstrip, basically, here on the, on the picture. And if it is too near the PCB, the, the return current of the field will not be uh, as it should be. Uh, you will have creation of a common mode current that will go in the ground plane, and this can cause a disturbance. So it's important to notice that as well. So the, the basic idea is to take the nets, especially the high-speed nets you will have on your, on your PCB. You take the component as well, and you check the rules that you want to check. Let's have an example here on all the rules we have. For example, we can check if you have a high-speed net that is spreading on top of a ground plane with a hole in it in position one. Of course, the return current will have to avoid uh, the hole. It will create a, a transfer inductance that will create common mode current. And uh, this can cause also you to, to fail the FCC normative, you know, the electromagnetic compatibility normative as well. So it's very important. So basically, we check all of those rules. And here, the idea in this example is to check if I have enough decoupling capacitor. So I'm going to select this kind of rule. And uh, on the left, I have uh, on the first PCB version, a lot of violation that are indicated with the dotted area. And if I place, if I add decoupling capacitor on top, I have advantage that I don't have those violation anymore. And uh, it is done with no simulation. Again, I repeat, I just making a screening of my uh, geometrical information of the PCB, and I compare so with some basic rules that have been set in advance. And it helps me because if I do that, I will be able to have less problem afterwards. So this is really important. Then, talking about board performance for signal integrity, I need to, exp I need to explain you, maybe you know, but sometimes I, I, I need to, to, to explain. So what is high speed? And first, I need to, to say, what is an analog signal on top? You see, the versus time, you have several values of amplitude. Huh? This is actually what is spreading when I'm talking, what it is acoustic noise. Or if you have, for example, a wave that is going to propagate with radio frequency, this is analog, huh? because transmission always work with analog uh, device. Digital device is different. You have two levels, zero logic at zero volt and one logic at five volt. So you have a series of zero and one, and this is how basically we code the, the things on the PCB. And here, what you are going to spread on your PCB is really, uh, if I, I will have sent a series of zero and one at the driver side, and what I'm going to get at the receiver side. So let's have a look. So basically, if you have a, a very slow signal, it's easy. But if you have what we call a broadband signal and high-speed signal, what happens actually with your digital signal is that the digital signal become analog, unfortunately, because it rises up, and as soon as it um, it all to the one logic, you have overshoot and undershoot. These are due, you know, to the difference impedance value from the transmission line you have in front of you and the impedance of the receiver that is located at the integrated circuit at the end of your line. And then you have a drop, and when you go to zero logic, you have another uh, similar effect on the shoot. And if the rise time is not enough, at the end of the day, you will not be able to recognize zero and one. And this is exactly what we have here. What we have here is basically a series of one, zero, one, zero that is sent on a, on a trace. And it is called a pseudorandom bit sequence. And this pseudorandom bit sequence is sent at the driver's side. And as soon as it will arrive at the, uh, at the receiver, we are going to do like we do in France, you know, in French, and we like in Paris, um, uh, accordion. Accordion, deployed accordion, instru music instrument, is the pseudorandom bit sequence. You have all the bits that are sent at the driver side. If you compress the accordion, you have all the commutation in one time bit. 
you obtain what we have, the hydrogram. If the hydrogram is closed, that means that you cannot go at the speed you wanted. Because of all the commutation and rise times that is not sufficient, you see, the transmission cannot support 500 megabit per second anymore. So you, you have two solutions, two options. You go lower in bit rates, you go 200 megabit per second and it will be okay, or you simulate and you solve your signal integrity problem. So this is what we want to do here in a practical example where we have a CPU uh, U1 that is connected to a memory U2 and using some DDR3 parallel lines and we want to simulate it. Alors, very important will be, you will see, the IBIS model. So I don't know if you are aware, but there are some so-called IBIS model that have been invented something like 20 years ago. I was belonging to the IBIS group meeting in the beginning. I remember it was in 1996. It was a big story there, IBIS version 1.0, I remember. And here, uh, basically, we represent a behavioral model of the uh, output impedance of the driver and input impedance of the receiver. And we don't care of what is inside the chip. You know, it's not a transition level, a transistor level model like SPICE. It's more, you know, a behavioral model of the impedance. But it's very important because it will allow us to do a signal integrity simulation. So let's have a demo. Here we have our PCB that has been imported. I start the SITD uh, framework and I select, okay, my uh, pin and my uh, model, and I'm going to open the model that is used. And as you can see, we have a IBIS model editor where you can see the waveform of the uh, impedance and also the power clamp, which is a very important. And these are some protection diodes to protect from overshoot and uh, undershoot. And then we apply this kind of model to the uh, relative nets, and we use a stimulus to excite. Alors you can choose what you want. Here in that case, we are using a specific pseudo-random bit sequence, uh, PRBS, as you can see, with a certain pulse, period, and rise time. Okay, here you go. And we check also the other signal. Okay, good. This is at the driver side. Of course, we need to do the same at the receiver side. And maybe at the receiver side, we are going to do, we have quiet line. And as you can see, we have a schematic. And the schematic is automatically generated. And you can simulate, and you obtain the so-called hydrograms that I showed before, which is exactly the capability to see if you can go at this bit rate. So it's a very, very uh, useful uh, tool. And you measure the bit jitter. Bit jitter basically is basically the dimension of the air to see the opening of the eye. Here, if I zoom on the transient signals, I can see basically, if I try to zoom, the overshoot and undershoot we were talking about before. So you see, if I would go to 1.3 volt, maybe my component is going to change of state. So I will not send a zero or one anymore, but I will, I will have one one. It's, it's not going to work anymore. So here is what I wanted to show you. Then we have capability with our uh, software to, uh, as I said, to uh, plot the the, the, the the eye width, okay, and eyes uh, expansion, and also the bit jitter. It's very important, the bit jitter, which is the dimension of a zero. And then we can obtain the timing bus tube to obtain the bit error rate, which is, at the end, what you need to obtain uh, for your co connection. So this is basically what we can do with the software for signal integrity. And what I want to announce is a great news huh? from version 22. We have an automatic process for DDR3, DDR4 uh, parallel buses, especially for memory, because uh, if you need to simulate each net one after the other and check yourself on the diagram, it can be time consuming. So here we, we did something uh, to ease your work and to check with the DDR standard. So basically, you obtain a list like this one with an indication in green if you pass the requirement of the mask. Because of course, for each of the line, you will need to simulate a diagram, and we compare with the mask of the corresponding DDR4, and we see if what you obtain is acceptable or not. 
So you can let the software simulate uh, and go to take a coffee. When you come back, you have a, a, a list of violation for the DDR4. So it's really nice. So here for that, we use PCB Studio and what we call DES, which is Design Studio. This is basically the circuit simulator integrated in our solution. Then also to clarify any doubts, we are compatible also with IBIS IMI uh, version, which is a new uh, version of IBIS model that is a bit more enhanced. So we can work with them as well. And we have a component library. And also some of you may use some edge spice encrypted model from Synops Synopsys. You know, Synopsys uh, edge spice is well used for a, a specific integrated circuit. And if you are buying those integrated circuits to place on your PCB, you may get some encrypted model from Edge Spice. We are able uh, to basically convert the, the top circuit into a sub-circuit that can be consumed by our uh, design studio. Huh? Uh, that means uh, we can simulate the encrypted model of Edge Spice, which is a very nice feature again. So basically, for signal integrity, we have a very nice benefit because we are able really to cover uh, serial link as well as parallel nets. We have automatic way to check violations. We can we have access to a key uh, KPI like I diagram verification. Okay, and we can do a prediction of the bit error rate. So this is what I wanted to show you for that part. Are there some questions? One of the things on importing. What kind of file can we import if our layout system is not giving me ODB++ or IPC files? Yeah, it's a good point. Sometimes we still find some persons that don't use, you know, um, the, the major vendors. We name them, huh? Cadence, Mentor, Zuken, and so on. And there are others. Huh? You have PCAD, Pantheon, uh, Orcad. You have all of those smaller players that are still outputting ODB++. But still, there are some software that they don't. So in that case, you know, uh, that you need to work with Gerber files. And you need to manually connect in the, in the editor of uh, CST Studio the elevation and thickness so that you rebuild the 3D model internally. So it takes some time to work in the cross-section editor. It will take maybe two hours, but you can do it. So you import basically, uh, you use what we call a, a 2D Gerber import. You, you import each layer, layer per layer, and you ask additional information like elevation and thickness and what are the properties in terms of epsilon and, uh, and sigma, the conductivity. And you are able at that point to rebuild it yourself. And we can help you uh, to do it uh, if you need help. Now, the, the other topic, which is, uh, power distribution network analysis. And why is this uh, power distribution network analysis uh, coming so popular nowadays? I remember when I started doing signal integrity simulation in the years 1994, so it may be a long time ago, uh, nobody could simulate the ground bounds. The ground bounds is what you see here, where you have uh, the VCC or the ground bounds. When you have uh, uh, basically uh, your alimentation, it's 1.8, it's low voltage, 1.8 volt. It's not always 1.8. Each time you, you change of state from the integrated circuit drivers, you have some uh, bounds on the alimentation, on, on the, on the power distribution network. And this is not nice because each time you have that, it's going to influence the signal integrity result and also it's going to provoke if you connect, for example, a cable to the ground plane of your PCB, it will be like an antenna. So you will see some, basically, uh, some uh, spectrum uh, uh, peaks uh, coming up. So if you go to the anechoic chamber for the FCC limit verifi verification, it will be a mess. So it's crucial to have really capability to model PDN uh, accurately. And we have basically uh, two issues. Uh, the first issue is the following. Uh, when you have a voltage uh, module uh, regu regulator, that is some kind of uh, alimentation and so on, and you have an uh, integrated circuit over there, first of all, you need to have enough charges to, to drive 
all the integrated circuits that are located on the PCB. And uh, if you don't have enough charges, it's not going to work. So you don't have enough, basically, uh, power to drive your PCB. This is what we call uh, the uh, DC, continuous uh, power integrity analysis, ER drop. So we basically calculate the difference of voltage between the source and the VCC or ground pin of the integrated circuit, and we see basically the omicuses. The second one, which is in dynamic, it happens that we want to see what is the equivalent impedance that is seen as a, on the power distribution network at a certain point. Once I'm going to, to make commute some drivers, I want to see what is going to happen on my ground plane. And here we basically have a capability to simulate the impedance curve to see if you have some resonances. So let's have a look. As I said, the power uh, distribution network is more, you know, what we call IR drop. And the second is more, you know, what we call um, the impedance form. So if you are able to see how much power is delivered at the level of the voltage regulator and how much current your pin is going to seek at the, at the, at the integrated circuit level, then you can make this kind of curve where you are going to see, uh, because of the power loss, you obtain a special plot where you obtain in red, you have enough current to drive your device. But if you see here in green, or even in blue, on that part of the PCB, you don't have enough. That means that you may not be able to drive the integrated circuits that are located far away from the voltage modulator. So this is the first kind of analysis we can do. The second, as I said, is in dynamic, the calculation from one observation point at the power distribution network, we calculate the impedance and we try to see uh, what happens. So you, you said basically in the user interface what you have in terms of uh, power pin and ground reference. You obtain, you use all the capacitors that are available uh, on your PCB, okay? And you obtain a curve like that, which is basically a resonance at a certain frequency, and this will create some issues. Here you see it's very important to take into account also the serial resistance and inductance for decoupling capacitor. Because if you don't take into account, you see on the top, we don't take into account the serial resistor and the inductance. You have even a bigger peak. So before to come to a drama, let's uh, le let's get them into a consideration so that here is the real situation where we take into account the real value of uh, serial uh, resistance and inductance for the decoupling capacitor. But at the end of the day, what we want to achieve is to obtain at the frequency of resonance, so let's imagine we are located at this 0.18 gigahertz, we have a certain uh, spatial map of the ohmic uh, impedance value, and you have some parts that are red here. So the, the rule of the game will be to insert physically some uh, decoupling capacitor and to do that in order to lower the peak. And what is nice is that you are not going to do it yourself. We have a great tool which is doing it automatically for you, which is a PI decap tool. So what is it? Imagine you have in dotted line in green your target. I want to reach this kind of impedance. And here you have in red the first starting point. First of all, we take into account the capacitors that are included in your board. And we can also read the bill of material of the company. That is to say, all the parts library of the capacitors that your company is allowed to buy. That means we, we list them also with the price. And you know what? The optimizer is going to use as less as possible capacitor and the cheapest one to achieve the green dotted line. That means that it's going to play with the optimizer and it's going really to optimize with two objectives. One objective will be the dotted line, which is the impedance. 
The second objective will be to use the cheapest and the, 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 the smaller number of decoupling capacitors. So this is really a unique feature that we have because it's, it's a, a multidisciplinary optimization between price and impedance. So we use basically a, a very nice fe feature inside uh, for, for, for the tool. But at the end of the day, as you can see, we obtain, uh, we can really lower the impedance and you get uh, disappear at a certain point. So you can get rid of them. So really, uh, it's nice and automatic. Of course, it's not going to place new decoupling capacitor. It can optimize from a set that you have available. If you want to add and place yourself new decoupling capacitor, please consider the workflow I just show you in the beginning, where we use the connection with the PCB layout tool, Altium or Cadence, and you ask your colleague to ask physically the decoupling capacitor, and then you can verify yourself just after that. Right, so here, the power integrity benefit I see is that it's quite a, a, an integration. It's also multiphysic because if you have power integrity issue, it will lead you to have your PCB to warm up. So it's, it's a multiphysic problem at the end. And uh, it's very nice that we can really consume layouts and have a nice uh, mod sim uh, environment with cadence uh, and, and, and with Altium as well. And also, we have really an evaluation of the complete system using also, of course, uh, the, the component. So we model, of course, the component inside Design Studio. We are going to read uh, IBIS model, a SPICE model, HSPICE model, IBIS IAM model. So we are really compatible with the very top new way to model the integrated set. So wh what I want to show is HPC possibly on cloud. Why? Because Sometimes, if you simulate, alors, to tell you frankly, if you do a SI TV signal integrity uh, time domain and power integrity, the solvers are not going to consume so much, uh, so much time. It's pretty quick. But if you have a lot of nets to analyze, or if you want to simulate and couple SI with PI, that is to say, you know, the power distribution network is influencing the signal integrity results. Then you need to simulate your PCB in 3D and you need to use, I would say, uh, the, the high frequency solver of Micro Studio for that. We call it time domain analysis. And for a, a big PCB like that one, you can come to a big model. Here I have 43 billion of mesh cells, which is a monster. So if I simulate, and here I'm using the electromagnetic engineer, which is the cloud uh, role on the Swiss Experience platform of CST Studio, I get four hours if I simulate this monster on my PC with six cores. If I simulate on the cloud with 16 cores, I divide by two, one hour, 43 minutes. But then if I can Accept to pay a little bit more. And here we have Simulia, Sim Unit and Credit that can be purchased on top. Eventually only for a peak of work. Uh, if you have in month of May, you need to simulate a very big PCB. You can just purchase from us some credits. It's really a pay per use to have access to a system made of 24 cores and four GPU. The GPU are the graphic card from NVIDIA that are used to accelerate the simulation. In that case, you come to 23 minutes. This is why I want you to know that we have a great solution on the cloud as well. And here, it can really relieve you if you don't have a big cluster. And of course, the big guys in the Silicon Valley, they have big cluster uh, to, to simulate, uh, mostly with our tools. But the, 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 the startup company and the, the smaller companies, sometimes they don't. And here it's a great solution. You can, uh, you, you don't need basically to, to send your file to rescale. We just do it for you. And you just select basically the kind of uh, option you want with GPU, without GPU, and you pay a pay per use. And it's really out of the box. You can just let your model run on 
dans ce système cloud. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. It's been such a pleasure working with you on these presentations. It's a pleasure for me as well. Thank you. In summary, we learned that the CST Studio is a complete solution for electromagnetic simulation. Emmanuel showed that PCB designs can be imported into CST Studio and checked for design rules, such as decoupling capacitor rule checks. He also showed the bend tools within CST modeling to bend PCBs for a wearable device. Then he showed how CST Studio is used to analyze board performance of high-speed signals for signal and power integrity. And lastly, showed the capability of cloud computing in the electromagnetic engineer role on the 3D Experience platform to speed up the analysis solve time. That concludes part one of this three-part series. Part two of this series will address PCB thermal cooling. This presentation will show the importance of PCB thermal management and how heat is generated and travels through a PCB. And in part three, we will discuss why simulation of electronic devices with PCBs is needed before normative testing, such as FCC EMC normatives. Also, we will look at reducing electromagnetic interference issues through design rule checks. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave us a comment below if you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video. Visit our website, GoEngineer.com, for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Take care.